Welcome to the Continuum Lab. The launch of the Continuum Lab Instrument Kit version 2 is a success. To everyone who bought one of the first batch of kits, thank you. Your orders are on the way. And uh, I very much look forward to the workshops with the people who book those. And uh, for the rest of you, if you don't know what I'm talking about, then here's a very quick recap. You can use the click to fabricate a bunch of cool instruments. Like this. And this one. And this one here. And this. Using simple materials and techniques. And I really mean simple. I'm about to give you a sub five minute crash course of most of what you need to know to make instruments with the Continuum Lab instrument kit from simple to advanced. Start the timer. My name is Jeppe. I'm a musician turned maker and now I use electronics, coding, 3D printing and lots of cardboard to make MIDI controllers and musical instruments. You can buy the electronics I use over at continuumlab.com. Link in the description. I recommend that we begin with the simplest instrument of all and that's the one described in the quick start guide which comes in the click box printed in English and Spanish. It's really quick so I'll just show you. Let's get out the stuff that it says on the list. First thing, get these four cables plugged in right over here. Then I plug in the earbuds so that I'll be able to hear the instrument. Next is power. Connect the USB cable to the board and then into a phone charger or computer USB port. Now we calibrate. This is super simple. Push and hold down the button. Wait for the LED. Activate all the sensors. Release the button. Done. And now we can play. Sorry, let me plug this into some speakers so you can hear what's going on. Then the quick start guide talks about capacitive sensors and it basically suggests that I plug in some vegetables. So let's do that. Recalibrate. The click sensors are capacitive, so you can make them out of all kinds of materials. But potatoes are probably not the most practical choice. The click user manual, which you can download from continuumlab.com, gives some good ideas about ways that we can improve on it. And it also shows how to make the rest of the instruments. My favorite way of making simple capacitive sensors is with thumbtacks and we actually get a whole bunch of those with the kit. So let's get these other cables and plug the thumbtacks into them, like this. Now we'll make a quick structure out of corrugated cardboard. I'm recycling some packaging. It needs to be large enough to fit the clickboard inside but I'm also adding some extra space which will be useful later. And now we can distribute our sensors however we want. Don't forget to cover the sensors with some kind of tape as a dielectric layer. I'll glue them down to make everything more sturdy. Glue in the click board as well. And we're done. These techniques are described in more detail in the user's manual, so feel free to download that and have a look. Let's quickly calibrate. And now all of a sudden, it's almost like an actual instrument. I'll call it mm, the thumb drum. The sounds on the click are okay, but they're kind of limiting. So it's a good thing we also have a MIDI output so that we can plug into any uh, USB MIDI capable synthesizer and use it to play whatever sound we like. So to make that work, we have to change the click settings. And those are on the opposite edge of the board from where we put the key sensors. Grab one of these small jumpers, which come with the kit. Find the place that says MIDI and plug the jumper in there. And then we reset everything by unplugging the USB for a second and now the click will output MIDI. Check it out. Of course it's up to you to set up your synth and all that, but as long as it accepts USB MIDI, you should be fine. Now you might have noticed that this instrument doesn't seem to have any sensitivity, and you're right. 
that's one of the reasons why this is the simplest one and it's the main reason that we could even get away with potato sensors in fact all of the other click instruments have sensitivity built in like this keyboard for example which responds with the louder signal when i bang the keys harder but i'm getting ahead of myself let's see what we can do with what we already made Okay, this is going to sound a little bit crazy, but bear with me. We can turn this into an ocarina. I mean, think about it. It has four finger sensors on here, and I can see in the click manual that a four-hole ocarina is one of the options. The way I see it, we just add a breath sensor, and it's done. The click user's manual also describes a simple way of doing this. It involves using one of these sensor modules to measure the expansion of one of these balloons, and all we really need apart from those things is a plastic water bottle and a rubber band. We cut off the top of the bottle and then stretch the balloon over this part here using the rubber band. Then we make a hole in the bottle cap or if you want we can make a larger and a smaller hole for full air flow while playing. See how that works when I blow in it? Now we just need to set it up with a set of simple cardboard supports inside the instrument so that the sensor and the balloon membrane are held 5 to 10 millimeters from each other. And that's it. We'll have to calibrate this new sensor as well, of course, together with the other four, so let's do that. Oh, and of course we need to change the settings because right now the click still thinks it's a drum. In this case we'll insert some jumpers into these two selectors like you can see in the manual. Let's save the calibration so that we don't have to do it again after we reset. Just press the button three times, wait for the LED to blink three times and it's done. Now we can unplug, replug and start playing. We are back in audio mode now, so if you plug a button module into the sound header right here, we'll be able to cycle through the different samples, like this. Okay, so that covers the basic techniques for making keys and breath sensors, which is going to allow you to make almost all of the click instruments, like the recorder for example. If you look at it, it's really more or less the same as the ocarina we just made, except it has more keys. And of course the instrument setting is different here, which is how the click software knows what instrument we're making. But check this out, if I remove the instrument selection jumpers, then we end up right back where we started, and the click will now interpret this instrument as a capacitive percussion set, just like what we started with. So, those are some of the basics of the click. Of course, there's still a bunch more stuff to cover, such as key sensitivity, pitch bend sensors, string instruments and more, all of which will be in the next video. And don't forget you can get your very own Continuum Lab instrument kit over at www.continuumlab.com. Take care until next time and I'll see you in the Continuum.